Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Off the Charts, episode 142. Before we start off, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Hit that motherfucking like or subscribe button. Thank you. And cheers to you all again. Ah. There we go. So, um, before we start off, last episode was kind of a fiasco... Uh, copyright wise or there probably won't be any more name that tune I was permanently blocked I had to I had to trim a, a two segments anyway Russia doesn't like metal apparently and the rest of the world doesn't like Dio anyway enough of that so it was fun while it lasted but uh, anyway today's episode I will be talking about a another forgotten band and this one i would say it's as for well first of all the band is heavy petting uh hair metal hard rock band heavy uh heavy petting these guys seem to be really forgotten as my god there's hardly anything out there uh on the internet they don't even have a wikipedia page so this was actually pretty hard this is probably the hardest i've had to do research uh, regarding uh, this band here. So um, I'll go with what I could find and what I know. So the band Heavy Petten, I knew the name uh, pretty much thanks to Martin Popoff's uh, you know, ranking book that I have there from the 80s. Uh, knew the... Um, but here in Canada, there wasn't... I didn't have any friends have owning any Heavy Petten. Probably... I think I'm the only one of, of my friends who actually has some heavy pen, to be honest there. Not a diss against them. It's just, I guess, they didn't, they were not popular at all here in Canada. Not sure about the rest of the world, but they don't even have a Wikipedia page. So what can you see? So anyway, they're formed in Glasgow, 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 Scotland in 1981. So they had Gor Gordon Bonner on guitar. Brian Wall, Wa, W A U G H, Brian Wa, Wall, on bass. <laughs> it's, a, it's not like those uh, car commercials there. Wa, if you guys are watching hockey, you'll probably know what I'm talking about here. Uh, Gary Moat on drums, Steve Heyman on vocals, and Punky Mendoza on guitar. Not to be confused with punk, punk, is it Punky Meadows from Angel? Punky Mendoza on guitar. So, how to describe heavy pen? It's pretty much hair metal hard rock, which the comparisons are very, like a lot, very a lot. That's good English, Dan. Uh, close to Def Leppard and I'll get into that a little bit more there before we do that so I'll start off and I've had my friend Steve we've talked about Heavy Penton regarding album covers as they were different here in Canada than pretty much the rest of the world and also my friend Steve from Rock and Metal Invasion I went on to somebody else's channel I forget the name where they discussed Heavy Petten, but mostly the second album. So I'm just here to talk to you about the three albums really quick, like I said, from what I know, what I've... Like I said, I've listened to those albums. I actually like them a lot, some more than others, so we'll get into that there. Um, but um, their first one, and this is the one where I discussed with Steve, where the rest of the world known is known... known knows this holy fuck knows this as letting loose which is like i guess uh, two fingers or two hands i should say going through blinds similar to uh, if you remember the uh was it the kiss heavens on fire uh where they're kind of going through blinds peeking there kind of like that they're just but without the face just two hands and it's called letting loose if i can find the 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 JPEG, I'll put it on here. But this was the Canadian uh, 
um, release here in its self title with a completely different cover. So, I, uh, from what I remember, there was a video for In and Out of Love. Um, this is a little bit more raw. But uh, here we go. Here's the uh, the back cover right here. I guess it's like a. At first, I really, I thought it was like, but yeah, it's a drive-in, obviously. There, really bad looking one, to be honest. Whoever did the uh, artwork for this doesn't know about um, per, uh, perception, no. depth perception. There you go. That's the word I'm looking for, and I found it. So anyway. Heavy Pen uh, from 1983. Uh, Letting Loose Around the World. It was called self-titled here in Canada only. Um, I actually enjoy this one a lot. I probably is my favorite. Well, we'll get into that later on there. Um, it's great hard rock from A to Z. There's, like I said, I don't think there's a bad song on this at all here. I'm not familiar. You Well, if you saw my uh, Name That Tune episode, I'm not great with titles. But I do remember In and Out of Love, uh, Broken Heart, On the Run, uh, Shout It Out. But um, yeah, I would say that's probably my favorite one here. But like I said, more on this later here. So their first one from 1983, self-titled or Letting Loose, wherever you're from. Or where you're, whichever version you have of this album then and again I, I didn't know like this never showed on power hour sure this was by the time i got the much music channel i just they were already disbanded but uh, after that came number album number two which is rock ain't dead now this is the one where they had major comparisons to def leppard Musically, I find this album great. Like even a little bit better than, like I said, musically. Um, but the guy's voice in here annoys me. Like it's so high, and it's but musically, it's like sounds like Def Leppard, especially the song. Okay, it's not. I, I not that I had a disagreement with Steve there, but I was like, oh my god, the song "Rock Ain't Dead." Really, really reminds me of Def Leppard's Saturday Night High and Dry. So, rocking dead. And then you've got Saturday Night High and Dry. You know that one there? Uh, don't I don't sing that much right now. Voice is almost back to normal. Let me put it that way. But uh, so I really, it's a great song, Rocking Dead. Don't get me wrong. It's like, I don't want to start bashing it there. Soul Survivor is probably my favorite of um, of the whole album here. Uh, which one? The Heart Attack, another great one here. Uh, Throw a Party. So yeah, Rock Ain't Dead. This was the album cover. Of course, the back right there. Interesting album cover. Should have been a gatefold if you're going to put a picture like this here, but that's just me. Um, but yeah, like th musically, I like I said, this is polished, a lot less raw than the first one. Um, but yeah, the guy's voice is just like it's it's a little too much for me on this one here. While it's not as it it's as talented on the first one, it, it's still this guy is super talented. But it's like the producers like okay, if you guys are gonna make it big, you gotta. You know, the ear for the radio ear. Like, this is not radio stuff. Like, the guy's voice just, like... There's something that just bugs me about it here. Just on this album. I don't know why just this album here, but... Uh, but, song-wise, I, I find that there, this album is great. Just that one little thing I don't like there, so... Uh, but, this was in 1985. So, I guess... After this one, again, nothing here in Canada. I don't know about the rest of the world, how popular these guys were or were not. Um, in 1987, I guess, I don't know if they were recording the third album or what, but... Um, uh, there we go. 
don't know if it's when they were recording the third album, but they split up in 1987. Uh, again, can't can't find anything online as to why they split up or was it bad sales? Couldn't get along. I, I don't know. So while recording the third album, I guess they split up. This was released two years after their breakup in 1989, which is Big Bang. And you know what? I actually like this album. This is actually... Uh, it's... Think... If, if you're going to compare the, the, the second one to Def Leppard, think about the direction this these guys went on for this one. It's sort of like... Not as wimpy, but sort of like what Quite Right 3 did for Quite Riot, if that makes any sense. Or maybe even the QR album after that. It's just a lot more keyboard friendly. It's like more like pop hard rock as opposed to just hard rock or hair metal or which one I would call it there. But I actually enjoyed this album quite a lot. There, um, Here's the back cover right here. I guess it's a singer that... And of course, his voice doesn't annoy me on this one. I don't know why just that one album that... Uh, but uh, This Is America, like that's... Again, another... Not, I'm not going to say Def Leppard, but... I don't know what it is with... And I've actually talked to uh, my friend David from the UK. What is it with UK bands that are popular in the UK for some reason. They're huge or like really well respected. But for some reason, they want to break big big in America. Is America like the the greatest land on earth? I don't know. Like why is it that important for you guys to break into America? Because you got a song here, This Is America. Uh, Def Leppard has one also. Uh, something about America. I forget the song title. Saxon had one. Sailing to America, like there's a whole bunch of White Snake weren't popular until they released the '87 album, which was Americanized. And I asked my friend David, I'm like, how do you feel about that? Like, you got your UK bands that for some reason are ignoring or like telling the finger to the UK folks that have been supporting them, and you're like, you know, what? we're gonna go and uh, try to make it big in America. And it's pretty obvious, but anyway, he, he told me he's like, "Yeah, it's a little bit. It's a it it bugs it bugs him. I don't know if it bugs the rest of the UK world or whatnot there. So I'm just curious, like, how do you guys feel about that? If you're in the UK or some other band that's trying to make it big into America, like, what is the big deal with America? Uh, because you know, in hindsight." Uh, I guess I consider myself North American there, not American. But, uh, I mean, we did discover these bands. We could have discovered these bands later on, but they were still actually very good. And But anyway, enough about that. I'm just, like, I'm just curious to see like how do you guys feel about UK bands strictly wanting to make it big in America while apparently they're already big in the UK at the time. Anyway, I know it's a bigger market in America there, but still, I don't know. It's, it doesn't bug you guys. But anyway, going back to this here. It's a pop rock album here. But yeah, This Is America is still a great song. Like um, Madonna on the radio, that's its dumb title there. But I actually like the song. Um, Romeo was their, I guess they released a single in between Rock Ain't Dead and this one. Um... Born to Burn's a good one too. Like I said, I don't mind this one, but I guess it's a wimpier heavy pen than the first two. But you know what? A good song is a good song. I actually enjoy this uh, this album here. So anyway, this came out and they were already split up. So this was 1989 that they released this. Yeah, yeah, and um, Never heard of them, like I said, until I saw that uh, review in Martin Popoff's book. And I was like, okay, heavy pen. Like, I think I know the name. My friend Steve says they got their name from a UFO album called Heavy Pen there. Um, but anyway, that was it, that was it for uh, Heavy Pen. They actually reformed in 2007 and are still active, I think. They have a Facebook page. 
uh, we can go check that there. But I, like I said, that's there. The information, like I said, I just I was just shocked that there's no Wikipedia page. You'd, you'd think there'd be something regarding that there, but uh, there's not. So they're still 2017 present to present. Are they the same lineup? I don't know. Um, couldn't find the information, but but you know what? Like, if you like pop rock, this is actually a very good album. If you, like, and it's just three albums. If you want their discography, it's just three albums. If you like Def Leppard and like your high voices, I mean, this one's considered a classic. Musically, I love this album, but you know what? My favorite would be this one. This is to me is a is how they should have. It's like the first two Def Leppers. Everybody loves those two Def Leppers, and then they kind of went this direction with Pyromania and Hysteria, and then this is uh, I guess what Adrenalize. I don't know, but um, anyway, I I find the the three of them pretty equal. Um, I enjoy each one for a different reason. First one is more raw. Second one is very polished. Musically is the best one, but maybe the voice is just, maybe it's just me. And the third one is pop rock, but I actually like the songs. So there you go. There's my little uh, revisiting um, Heavy Petten. Do you guys know these guys? Apart from the name, do you guys own it? Anybody in Canada owns these uh, these albums here? Let me know. But uh, yeah, that's my little take on uh, Heavy Petting here. Like I said, just uh, I've been enjoying the, these guys' music here uh, of late. And uh, I like I said, my first album was over a year ago. I got this in Montreal by chance. I'm like, oh yeah, I heard about this band. You know what? So there you go. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I guess I'm done now. So, thank you guys again for watching. Thank you for subscribing and telling your friends if you haven't done so already. Whatever. Thank you for watching. That's all that counts. Anyway, we shall see you guys next episode. And on that note, have yourselves a good whatever. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.